like reports, stories, and novels can be hard to navigate through to find what you need or to find information about the document itself. In this lesson, we're going to discuss ways you can manage long documents to make them easier to manage and to navigate. If you're working on creating and editing a document that's going to be more than 100 pages, sometimes it's best to create several smaller documents. You can break the documents up by chapters or sections, and when you're working on something and editing it, it can be easier and quicker to break it up. You can save the different chapters or sections into their own document. Just name them so they're easily identifiable and save them into a specific folder. One of the reasons you may shy away from creating several documents that will eventually be combined into one is because of the work it might take to actually combine the documents together. For this reason, Word offers you a master document feature. The multiple documents you've created become sub-documents. When you combine these documents, you create a master document. We'll create a master document from some of the sub-documents we've created. To create a master document, simply start a new blank document in Word. Save the blank document. And then switch to the outline view. To switch to the outline view, go to the view tab. Then the views group and select outline. The Outline tab will now appear. Next, we can click the Show Document button and then the Insert button. In the Insert Subdocument dialog box, we'll locate the first document we want to insert and click Open. Now we just repeat the steps to insert all the documents we want to add to our master document. And when we're done, we need to be sure to save. You may find that you need to send out different parts of your document to be edited by different people. Because of this, you can also split a larger document into smaller documents. To do this, start by selecting the part of the document you want to turn into a new document. Use the Cut and Paste feature to cut the selected text. Then open a new blank document. and paste the text you've cut from the one document into the new document. Now you can save the document using an appropriate naming convention so that you can merge the documents later. Document properties, also called metadata, include all the information that can identify a document. It can include the name of the author, the date the document was created, the number of pages, copyright information, and even more. Let's view our document's properties by selecting the File tab and opening the Backstage view. We can see the document's properties on the right side of the page. Let's add a comment to the properties. We just click the Add Comments link and the Comments field will open. Now we'll just type our information in and press Enter. Now our comments have been added. If you ever need to create a table of contents for any body of work that you create in Microsoft Word, it's actually quite easy as long as you have applied appropriate styles to the headings in your document. For example, the quickest way to create a table of contents is to format those chapter titles, subtitles, and section headings using the heading styles in the Styles Gallery. Headings are basically labels for different sections of your document. In order to be able to create a table of contents in Word, any section or category that you want listed in the table of contents is going to need a heading style applied to it. 
For instance, a chapter title would have the Heading 1 style, subtitles would have the Heading 2 style, and sections would have the Heading 3 style. This identifies where the headings should be placed within the table of contents. When we create our document, we need to make sure to format our headings using the Styles Gallery. We applied the headings and subheadings earlier in this course when we talked about how to apply headings from the Styles Gallery. A new feature in Word 2013 is the ability to collapse your headings. Typically when you create a heading you have paragraphs of text below it. If you want to see the next heading, in the past you would have to scroll down or use the navigation page to navigate to it. In Word 2013, a little arrow appears to the left of a heading when you mouse over it. For example, we'll click on the arrow to expand and collapse the heading. When you're finished with your document, especially a large one, you will probably want to add that table of contents to help the reader of your document locate the information they are looking for. Let's add a table of contents to our document. We'll place our insertion point in the spot in our document where we want the table of contents to appear. Then we'll click the References tab in the ribbon and click Table of Contents in the Table of Contents group. We'll select the built-in format, Automatic Table 1. The table of contents is automatically created. You'll notice that the contents are organized based on the heading styles that we set up earlier. If you do decide you need to edit your document or make changes to the headings, you can always update your table of contents without redoing the whole thing. Apply all headings to the document so the table of contents lists everything. Just select the References tab in the ribbon, select Update Table in the Table of Contents group. This is right beside the Table of Contents button. Word will then ask you if you want to update page numbers or the entire table. If you've added headings, you'll want to update the entire table. Your table will now be updated. If you would like to add text that isn't formatted as a heading into your Table of Contents, Go to the Table of Contents group and click the Add Text button. If you decide you would like your text to appear within the Table of Contents, all you need to do is apply a heading style to that text and update your Table of Contents. The text will be added to your Table of Contents.